O'Neill who told us that all politics is local. Chuck Turner followed that religion. <laughs> and he has worked tirelessly on more causes than you and I could count. One of the saddest things, I came up in the civil rights movement. I spent the 60s in the government working largely for civil rights, first appointed by that beautiful man whose name is on this building behind us, John F. Kennedy. I started January 20th of 1961 with him. The civil rights movement of the 60s was revolutionary. The Voting Rights Act revolutionized our politics. But one of the tragic and major reactions to it was um, the persecution of black Americans. We saw it coming and we tried to stop it, but we lost so many great people and so much great talent. A man like Adam Clayton Powell, who was chairman of the Education Committee in the House of Representatives, prosecuted a great loss to the United States. Many educators have said he probably did more for education in the United States than any other person. Among other things, the federal he was chair of the committee in the House of Representatives. The budget more than doubled. Charles Diggs from Michigan, a great congressman. Apparently, every African-American member of the Congress during those years was investigated and rumors of criminality, I'm talking about the 70s now, broadly <laughs> circulated. And we've got to do better than that. I'm honored to be here with Chuck Turner. I'm convinced that he'll be vindicated outraged that the public and he are hurt by this uh, assault on his character. I need to say something about the presumption of innocence. If you believe that the presumption of innocence is merely a technical legal rule in criminal cases, then you don't understand life yet. <laughs> The presumption of innocence, for those who seek the truth, is a way of life. Prejudgment is prejudice. And a great segment of the press here has prejudged this case. And that's right. Uh -huh. You don't find the truth by leaks in the United States Attorney's Office, selective leaks without the defense even knowing what the real evidence is to this day. Denied hearings, it would enable them to cross-examine anyone that wants to make false accusations. Or maybe they believe them, who knows, but we won't find out, will we, for some time. Let's believe in the importance at every level of the presumption of innocence. Before you accuse your child of something spank her. <laughs> Better find out if she really did it, you know. Keep an open mind. It's, it's the only way to find the truth. Liberty, curiosity, and doubt. Be free to seek the truth, be curious, to be driven to find the truth, and then doubt it <laughs> until you're darn sure it's right. And then you'll make out a lot better. I've got to say something um, about the little bit we know about this investigation, the conduct of the United States Attorney's Office in this case, and the FBI, because it troubles me deeply. Why would you send seven FBI agents out at six o'clock in the morning? go to the house of this good man <laughs> to arrest him. If phone calls were still a dime, 
all you had to do was spend a dime and he showed up, wouldn't he? Does anybody doubt that for a moment? No. Nope. Isn't the purpose a scandal? It's kind of dangerous. But perhaps above all, wrong-minded and wasteful. Is there so little crime at the federal level that you can send seven agents out to do a meaningless task? <laughs> Taxpayers' money. And if they'd known the truth about the man, they'd realize he's already down at the office working. <laughs> That's right. Right over there. That's right. That's right. So what do they do when they find him working in his office? <laughs> Which they could have known in the first place if they'd lived here and paid attention to what the public officials do. Yes. They bring him out in handcuffs. You know, like he's been convicted of some crime. And do they arraign him right here, next door? No. Nope. They drive him to Worcester, Massachusetts. Yes. Couldn't find the place. So no friends or those who know him and believe him and love him <coughs> can be there. Yes. What a way to conduct the office of a prosecutor. But maybe it's in the tradition of John Ashcroft, yes. Alberto Gonzalez, yes, and Michael Lucchese. Right. Yes. I mean, look what's happened to the Bill of Rights. Yes. During the last eight years. Yes. And look what they did to the Bill of Rights. Uh, this U.S. Attorney here. Yes. And at what cost to the public? Chuck Turner keeps the faith. Yes. And he'll carry on. But let me tell you, it ain't easy. <laughs> when so many people's minds have been poisoned in this community yes. by the conduct of the, of the government. They've overcharged mercilessly. I mean, three counts on a thousand dollar claim. <laughs> <laughs> and Bush stealing thousands, thousands, billions and billions. Who are they, who are they kidding? <laughs> and what have they done about uh, all the bankers and others here? That's right. <laughs> off. The mortgage loaners and all the rest. Yes. What they're doing is they're trying to crush uh, the people. Their politics isn't local. Their politics is divorced from the people. Yes. And arbitrary decision making. I made some notes flying up here in the fog this morning. I don't want to overlook any, anything, so I'll, I had a professor used to always say, let me look at my valuable notes for a minute to make sure I've got everything down here. The, the, the abuses uh, that we've already seen are, are just awful, but I, I think um, George Bernard Shaw, in talking about England, which he loved to do as an Irishman, pretty much told us um, where we're at with our government today. They want to send a poor boy to the Borstal for stealing a loaf of bread, if he did, and a rich man to the Parliament for stealing the railroad. Yes. And that's what we're doing. $70 billion, $700 billion bailout for people that will then increase their Salary. bonuses and Bonus. salaries and all the rest. While a man that works night and day for the people, they try to put him out of business. Well, we can't let that happen. That's right. The timing of this is pretty serious too. Why, how is it they've gone on for 18 months and now just at the end of the administration they've come up with this? <laughs> there ought to be a moratorium on any further action until a new and independent, hopefully, prosecutor can come in here and review this whole matter. Yes, all right, all right. Yes. To determine two things, <laughs> whether the prosecution should be prosecuted. Yes. And determine whether there's any probable cause to believe that a man who has devoted his entire adult life and probably half of his childhood yes. to helping others, yes. whether there's probable cause to believe that he ever hurt an aunt. Yes. And he certainly never hurt his uncle. <laughs> I'm talking about Uncle Sam. Yes. Because the beneficiary finally of local politics is, uh, is the country as a whole. Let's keep the faith in our good people. Let's demand a full exposure by an independent investigation yes. Yes. of how this tragedy happened here. Yes.